if you grew up in this country, odds are that most of the classic children's books that you read were written by white American or British authors and featured young white heroes and heroines. Think about it. It was Charlotte's Web, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, even The Cat in the Hat. In fact, the first bestseller of To Break That Pattern was The Snowy Day, all about a young black boy, and it was written by a white writer. Now, things have changed, but it's still safe to say that our next three guests would argue they need to change a little bit more. A little faster. Well, they are all children's book authors, one from Honduras, another from Haiti, and the third a Brooklyn-born Haitian American. On May 4th, there'll be panelists in a Brooklyn Commons symposium called The Importance of Multicultural Children's Books. Joining us now are Cindy Similian Johnson, author of Haiti Is. Welcome to BK Live. Thank you for having me here. Ms. Mm. Soma Arzu Brown, whose books include uh, Bad Hair Does Not Exist. Can't wait to read that. Thank you for joining us. You got it. Thank you. And Ms. Maureen Boyer, the author of Where Is Lola? And thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Okay, ladies. Um, one, I just want to say congratulations on, on your publications. Thank each you. and every one of you. You know, where did the idea to... Um, create diversity in, in publishing. Where did your idea of your stories come about? I'd sure. like to start, Cindy. Sure, I uh, published my book, Haiti Is, uh, about a couple months ago. Um, growing up, I didn't have access to writing to books of uh, African-American uh, authors. And two years ago, I decided to write a book about Haiti uh, for young children who are raised here in Brooklyn. And one of my friends, who's of Dominican descent, decided to collaborate with me uh, to illustrate the book. And Look at that, that's both sides. Yeah, of the yeah island. both sides of the island together, because there was an issue, if you remember correctly, two mm -hmm. years ago about the Haitian deportation Dude. issue, and we wanted to contribute to helping those who were on the border. And this is my way of helping those individuals. All the funds will go to two organizations this year, uh, to Anse Puaiti, which is also known as Teach for Haiti, and uh, Yispaniola, who work with Haitian people along the border of Dominican Republic and Haiti. And that's my inspiration for writing these particular books, was to not only empower my community, but also to share stories about my culture, about my Haitian heritage. All right, speaking of culture Ooh. and heritage, <laughs> Pelo Malo no existe. That's right, Pelo Malo no existe, and bad hair does not exist. You know, it's so interesting. When I became a mom, I didn't realize how, uh, how upset I would be with the term Pelo Malo, and it wasn't until my caregiver used it to describe the curly textured hair of my then three-year-old daughter, but I knew that I had to respond from a place of love. And that conversation led to me giving her proper terms and asking her to work with me as an equal partner to build up not just my daughter's self-esteem, but also the self-esteem of all uh, the children. You know, that exchange was so beautiful because my caregiver then expressed to me that her father was an Afro-Latino from Puerto Rico, okay. and the only term he knew for his own hair was pelo malo. So I told her, you know what, it's going to stop with you and I, and we're going to change the world. You know, and I promised her that I'd find her a book that talks about this. I had no idea I was going to write the book. <laughs> okay? <laughs> because it was so difficult to find, so you had to just do it yourself. Yeah, because it was really about proper terminology. So I worked with my best friend and the only illustrator I knew, Isidra Savio, who's also a Garifuna woman from Honduras. And we took the opportunity to make sure that we include all shades of, of Nubian, mixed ethnicity, children and parents, all different shapes and sizes and professions so that the community can also understand what our community looks like through our lens. And our community is about love and harmony. And that's all depicted in the book. Okay. I love it. I love this it. This takes us to Lola. There's some love and harmony in there. Lola? Well, my inspiration behind the book was that um, as a teacher, I, I taught while I was living in Haiti. I was born in Haiti, I, I was raised here, and I went back to Haiti um, seven years ago. And then I started teaching a lot of students who had lived also in the U.S. So they were straddling between being Haitian and being American. And there was kind of like lack of pride in Haiti because Haiti, the word Haiti comes with a lot of a lot of uh, burden, you know, a lot of negative Im images, a lot of neg negative things are associated with Haiti. So I wanted to inspire not, not only my students, but also um, kids in, 
in, in the U.S. who are Haitian descendants who are not sure what to what Haiti is. So this is why I this is why I wrote Where Is Lola in a way to 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 love Haiti more, to admire the landscape, admire what Haiti has to offer mm -hmm. besides all the negative uh, press. So looking at this broader landscape, you guys have open the door now. How do we get these books and stories into the hands of parents who might not be aware? What's happening on the distribution end? Is it a lot of word of mouth? Do you have people behind you pushing and doing the PR things? What's that part of the business like? For me, uh, because I've decided to self-publish this book, mm -hmm. uh, all of the marketing I do on my it's end, all you. it's all me. Uh, yeah. As a self-publisher, I it's all the marketing is done on my side and how I get the word out is through social media through Instagram, through Facebook. Yeah, that's what a hashtag. Uh, right, with the and hashtag. Events like, you know, next right. week. And events that we're having in a couple of weeks on May 4th, Author Talks, which I have founded and curated, and also book readings. I've conducted a lot of book readings at schools, at local community centers, local organizations. And again, yes, through word of mouth. People learn more about what our yeah. books are about through our readings, our invitations to radio shows like this. Mm -hmm. um, and because we do want to raise the conversation or uh, have that conversation about multicultural books. How important is it that families who don't happen to be brown mm -hmm. read these books and make it a part of their lives? Because we've been reading their books. Yeah. Time and memorial, but how does it go the other way? Exactly. It's so important. You know, I tell people all the time that, you know, we have been given books that don't look like us. We have been given cards that don't look like us, and we've become okay with that. I think that in the spirit of cultural solidarity and cultural sensitivity, it is important for white kids to get this book, especially in the world that we live in to, uh, today. There's too much divisiveness, and we cannot afford for our children to go into the next generation being divided. We know what that's like, and we don't want to repeat that. And as for how do we get the word around, I actually became a registered vendor for the Department of Education. So uh, schools are able to have me, you know, do, do conversations and author talks to inspire their, their, their students. Not only that, I've embarked in, in college tours, spoken to several teachers, actually hundreds of teachers, yeah. to make sure that when they go out and teach, they're also, they, they know that they have a tool that is committed to um, to diversity, and that's what it's about. So when Cindy came up with Author Talk, it was kind of like a breath of fresh air. Maureen mm -hmm. would probably agree because I'm not alone in this. Yeah. You know, we're right. all in this together, and through the power of social media, we can make things happen, and we can shift again that paradigm. You know, I think that um, our community is ready to take some some control and of, of the messaging. What do you What do you hope people take away from attendance at the symposium? What's What's the takeaway? The takeaway would probably be uh, to understand that there are tools well, that talk about. Well, besides just taking away a beautiful book. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> no, <clears throat> that it's okay to have culturally diverse books, and it's okay to teach our community and support authors that are on the grind to make sure that the message of solidarity gets out there. And mm -hmm. hopefully it'll in inspire mm -hmm. more people, more authors to mm -hmm. actually write Yes. diverse books mm -hmm. from their perspective yeah. because mm -hmm. you know diverse books there's there are a million perspective in terms of yeah. what can be written you know and I'm mm -hmm. a proud uncle at the moment yeah. and <laughs> they read those books several yeah. times a day mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. always go back to the certain grooves and like you know it backwards and forwards so the message has to be going in through their brains yeah, definitely uh, for instance I was at a reading a couple of months ago um, back in I believe in February, and one of the mothers reached out to me, and she's a third generation Haitian American, mm -hmm. so her, her daughter was born here in the U.S., and she came up to me and said, thank you so much for coming into our communities to bring mm -hmm. about this book, because now she can entertain the conversation with her daughter uh, to talk about the Haitian culture. Uh, uh, again, my title, the title of my book is called Haiti Is. And what is Haiti? Again, as Maureen mentioned, Haiti uh, has been portrayed as a negative country, as the, one of the poorest countries in the Western Hemisphere. And I want to change that paradigm. I want to change the model of what Haiti appears to be to the younger generations who've never visited. And yeah, I agree with you. That, and that's the mission of Author Talks, of bringing authors from different backgrounds to collaborate so that they can change their communities. And that's why we're here 
Uh, so we've percent. got two minutes left to go in this segment. I mm -hmm. want you to let us know how and where we can get ourselves in a place and get some copies to There's add this copies. to our arsenal. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. I, I got, like you said, I'm the proud uncle, so I definitely, mm -hmm. uncle zone. we got to pass these far, far and wide. Yeah, start mm -hmm. us off, Maureen, ahead of Gum and Author Talks, how can we get a copy of Where's Lola? Well, you could find it on Amazon. Also, one more book, which is my publisher, you could find it there. But Amazon, Where's Lola, Maureen Boyer, You'll find it there. Amazon, that's everything. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Exactly. And Soma? Yep. And oh, can you also tell us about the, your 10K initiative? Sure. Well? Yeah. You can also find the book on Amazon. And for every book you purchase, or anyone purchase, goes towards the 10K initiative. And the goal is to put 10,000 books in the hands of 10,000 girls by the end of the year because I want to give proceeds of $10,000 back to community organization and also in the form of scholarship awards. So again, Amazon.com, you can get Bad Hair Does Not Exist, and it's Spanish version, Pelo Malo No Existe, and this all books too. are bilingual. Yeah. Being from Honduras also makes me an Afro-Latina, and it's important that we learn the language of one another, yeah. because that makes for better friendships. Well, my hair is... <laughs> <laughs> is there somewhere? <laughs> Um, but yeah, everyone can get my book again. Haiti is at the at Amazon.com. I have upcoming readings, the author talks that I founded. People can purchase books uh, at the event. Um, people can visit authortalks.ventbrite.com to learn more about us. We have links on our pages, on our website, and thank you for having us. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Awesome. Good job, yeah. Jeff Bezos. You got three fantastic books on Amazon. You can get everything on that site. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll be reading more soon.